Hello, this lecture introduces the if statement in Python. To begin with, let's go ahead and start up Python. Go to the Start menu, click All Programs, select Python 3.1 from the menu, and select the first item, idle, Python GUI. Okay, Python is started up. Now, to enter the script, I'm going to go underneath the File menu and select New Window. And there we go. I'll move this off to the side a bit. Now, in this case, I want to create if statement that will allow me to check the current temperature that the user types in and print out if it's hot or not. So let's go ahead and get started as far as getting the user to type something in. So I'm going to use an input statement and an input function, any function. We've got the name of the function, which in this case is input, followed by a parentheses along with the parameters. So, I'm going to put in what is the temperature, and question mark, and I'm going to do a space after the question mark so when the user types in, they don't type in right next to the question mark. And in parentheses. Now, to test out, before I even get to the if statement to see if this works, I am going to go ahead and save this. So I go underneath the File menu and hit Save. If you want to be really efficient, you can just go ahead and hit the Control s key, then you don't have to mouse around. Okay, and if you recall, once you try saving something, here we are, we are inside of the Python directory, which is where all of the Python program files and everything are. This is not where I want to add my files. So I do not want to take this default up here. I want to go ahead and change that off to the H drive, and you can pull down the selection here. Sometimes you'll get the H drive. In this case, I didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and put H colon backslash, and I'll have the H drive. Then I can type in here, I want if underscore statement as my file name. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and leave it at that. It'll work if you do but Python files generally end in a .py, and that allows the computer to know that these are indeed Python files. It's the same, works the same with .doc for document files, .xls, in this case we have .py. If you don't include the .py, then the program runs, but oddly enough, we don't get the color syntax highlighting. So when you type it in, it all types in in black. And as you'll see as we start typing in the code, we'll actually get color because we ended it in .py, and it knows for sure that it is a Python file. OK, so I go ahead and save that. I've got my input here. Now if I run this, hit Run, Run Module, or I could just hit F5, my program should work OK. Great, what is the temperature? I'll type in 90, hit enter, program is done. Now, the next step, I actually want to go ahead and print out what the user typed in, just to make sure that we're doing that. But the problem is I haven't done anything with what the user has typed in. You'll note right here I've got the function. This function returns what the user's typed in, and I haven't done anything with it. Sort of like if I'd ordered something from Amazon and I didn't tell Amazon where to ship it. So the computer dutifully does the duty here and just like Amazon might, for instance, pack up your package and then since there's no place to ship it, they just dump it in the garbage. This is not what we want and it can be a little bit hard of a thing to figure out if I ever ask you that particular question. But the result, the answer is really easy. You just need to put it into a variable. So I'm going to create a variable I'll call temperature, which is a good variable name when it represents temperature. I'm going to do temperature equals input. Now whatever the user types in will go into the temperature variable, and then I can print temperature right there. And now if I save this, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control S, automatically saves. Then I'm going to run it, run module. Then it goes ahead and runs. I'm going to type in the temperature is 90 degrees, and it prints out 90, so I got the input just fine. Now, as a little aside here, I can't actually do any math with this. I'll show you an example. If I wanted to print out the temperature plus 1, if I typed in 90, what I would expect to get back would be 91. But if I run this, 
you'll find what I actually get back is an error. And the problem is when the user types in something, the computer doesn't actually know if it's a number or if it's a name or if it's uh, um, something else entirely. The user could type an entire book. So the computer doesn't know that I'm typing in a number, so I can't add the number 1 to it because what if they typed in Fred? How would you add 1 to Fred? Now, I could add 1 if this was a string. That is a whole set of characters. If you look at the error over here, it says can't convert integer, which is the 1, to a string implicitly. Implicitly means without you specifically telling me to. And we'll show how to tell it to do that here in a bit. So if I made these both strings, and I can make a number 1 into a string by putting double quotes around it, then the computer does not treat it as numbers because it already thinks temperature is not a number. And when I run it, go ahead and save, I hit F5 to run. If I type in 90, not very well. Uh, let me try that again. I had the wrong key. Type in 90. When it adds 1, it doesn't add it as a number. It just tacks it on at the end because it would do, if I had typed in Fred, it would do Fred 1. So the thing is, I need to tell the computer to actually convert this into a number so that it can do calculations on it. And I can do that rather easily by the following. I'm going to assign temperature a new value, specifically the result of converting the old value to an integer. And I can convert a string to an integer by using int as a function name and then passing the string in. Now, if temperature is no longer a string, I can take off these double quotes. I can run. What is the temperature? I type in 90, 91, all right, I'm good to go. So now, finally, I can work with if statements. So an if statement looks like this. I type in if, easy enough. Then I type in the item that I want to compare to which in this case is temperature. You can't make this up. The computer won't automatically put in a value to something. Basically, I need to have this match exactly what I have up here. I want the temperature to be greater than 90. If, so if the temperature is greater than 90, you note here I just do variable, then I do a greater than sign, and the number 90, followed by a colon. All if statements must end in a colon. I can then do a print statement there we go so if temperature is greater than 90 degrees print it is hot outside you will note that this is indented automatically for me basically one tab stop the computer does this automatically as I type only the statements that are indented will go with the if statement. So if I go down a couple lines, hit a backspace, and then do print done, this will always be executed, whether we are greater than or less than 90. Only the indented lines will execute if it's greater than 90. So I've got that. I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. Run my module here. Down here it says, what is the temperature? No, that's not what I wanted to do. Windows and its silly automatic expansion. There we go. Temperature is 95. Prints it is hot outside and it is done. I can go ahead and run this again using the F5 key. What is the temperature? I type in 80. And it just prints done. It does not print the it is hot outside. Note also if I were to type in 90 it does not print it is hot outside because 90 is not greater than 90. If I want a greater than or equals 
I could change the symbol to look like this. Greater than or equals. I cannot do this. That is not valid. It has to be the greater than sign followed by the equal sign. So I can go ahead and run this. 90 also is now hot outside. There are different operations that you can do. I could do less than 90 like that. I could do less than or equal to. A very common mistake is to try to do a comparison this way. If the temperature is equal exactly to 90, not greater, not the less than, then you might be tempted to do a comparison this way. But it doesn't actually work so well. I'm going to go ahead and run it. Invalid syntax. I can't even begin to run it. And the reason is an equal sign is an assignment. That means temperature we are going to set equal to the value of 90. It is not a question. To query whether something is equal to something else requires two equal signs in a row. Typically in English we'll use x is something else and we'll just consider it a fact and we'll do the same thing as far as the if statement but really they are different operations. So to assign something like we did up here it's one equals. We are telling the computer that they are equal to each other. With two equals we are asking so if you are not inside of an if statement or some other statement that requires the question, then you want a single one. You're telling the computer it. If you're inside of an if statement, you'll never want a single. You'll always want a double equals. So if temperature is equal to 90, exactly, print it is hot outside. So I can run that. And if I type in 90, prints it is hot outside. If I run it again, and I put in 91, it skips over that entirely. Okay, I'm going to go back and put this back to greater than or equals. Oh, there's one other comparison. This is not equals. It will print, it is hot outside, unless I put in exactly not equals to 90. And that is an exclamation point followed by an equal sign. Invalid argument. Let's try this again. It seems to have been confused. There you go. What is the temperature? I could put it 899 degrees and it puts in it is hot outside if I run it again. The only time it would not print it out is if I typed 90. Okay, I'll flip this back to greater than or equals. That's great. What if I want to print its not hot outside. I could do the following, and this is an else statement. It has to immediately follow the if statement. It is unindented. So no matter what, we're going to end up printing something. If it's greater than or equal to 90, we'll print it is hot outside. If it is not, we'll print it is not hot outside. Format goes like this. We have a colon at the end of it, just like we have the colon at the end of the if statement. We unindent. This E lines up exactly with the I of the if statement that it follows up. This will not work if it's indented. Not valid. If I just have a couple, not valid. I can't stick it up here. It needs to be here and only here. So go ahead and run this. I put in 67, prints out it is not hot outside. There we go. I can actually have even more comparisons. This is called an else if. I start off with the word else and I kind of combine it with the word if. So I've got an elif, which is sort of a strange hybrid elf, I guess. If the temperature is less than 30 degrees, print it is cold outside. So the logic will go through here. If I enter a 90, it'll print it's hot outside. If I enter an 89, it'll drop down here. Is 89 less than 30? Nope. Then it'll drop down to the else statement and it'll print out it is hot out, not hot outside. If I enter 90, it'll check. Is it greater than 90? Nope. 
excuse me, if I enter 30, it'll check. Is 30 greater than 90? Nope. Is it less than 30? Nope. So it'll print, it's not hot outside. If I enter a 0, is it greater than 90? Nope. Is it less than 30? It is. It'll print, it's cold outside, and that will be the only statement that prints out.